required to build and assemble proteins, but they're also the end products of protein digestion. Now, it turns out that our body cannot produce all of them. In fact, there are 10 amino acids that our body needs to acquire from our diet in sufficient amounts. They are therefore termed as essential amino acids. Now, the remaining 10 are termed as non-essential amino acids, and it turns out that our body can produce them in sufficient amounts. It is known that at neutral pH, the amino group, which is basic, and the carboxylic acid group, which is acidic, like to accept a proton or donate a proton, respectively. As a result of this, amino in amino acids that exist freely in solution, the amino group likes to accept a proton and acquires a positive charge. And at the other end, the carboxylic acid group donates a proton and comes to acquire a slight negative charge. Now, this form of the amino acid where the net charge is still zero or neutral, but there are opposing positive and negative charges on the same molecule is known as the Zwitter ionic form of the amino acid. Now, in German, Zwitter means hybrid. And so this is where the uh, word comes from. Now, since they both contain a acidic and a basic group in the same molecule or amino acid, most amino acids are said to be amphoteric in nature. So how do amino acids come together to form a protein? For this, let us consider two amino acids, amino acid one and amino acid two. Now they both have their amino groups and their carboxylic groups. Now between the carboxylic group of amino acid one and the amino group of amino acid two, we can remove a water molecule. So how can we do this? We can take a hydrogen from the amino group of amino acid two and a hydroxyl from the carboxylic group of amino acid one. And together, when they're eliminated, they form a water molecule. Now, the remainder of these two amino acids are the just the groups, the carboxylic group here and the amino group here, can form a bond. And this bond also known as a, is also known as a peptide bond. Now, the bond is formed between the carboxylic and the amino group, so it's a CONH bond. Now, because it involves the removal of a water molecule, this sort of a reaction is also known as a condensation reaction. Now, this condensation reaction or peptide bond formation can happen end to end, leading to a formation of a long chain. It can happen between amino acid pairs one and two, amino acid pairs two and three, three and four, and so on. Now, you'll notice then that the amino group of amino acid one here and the carboxyl group of the last amino acid here are not paired with anything else. So there's a free amino group here and a free carboxyl group here. And so these are known as the ends or the termini of the protein or polypeptide chain. This is known as the N-termini and this is known as the C-termini.